It's a packed house here in Blacksburg for softball as the Seminoles of Florida State look to sweep the Virginia Tech Hokies. Hello everyone, I'm Tyler Katz, joined alongside Shelby Gwynn and Shelby yesterday. Virginia Tech falling in the seventh inning after Florida State was able to wake up and get a big comeback. Yeah, the Seminoles have really brought their bats to Blacksburg, both in these first two games of the series. So we'll be looking to see what they bring to the plate in game three today, but really capitalizing on some defensive blunders in the field for the Hokies, as well as a lot of aggressive base running. So the Hokies are going to need to clean up a couple of those things. We've seen some great performances by pitchers, but really it's going to happen on the defensive side and what happens at the plate is going to make the difference in the finale today. Well, yesterday was a big win for Florida State. They look to get another one today. Clemson winning earlier today, a half game back on Florida State. The Seminoles will try to hold off the Tigers. Now, this series has been dominated by Florida State so far statistically. Shelby, what stood out to you? Yeah, the biggest thing I'm seeing is that runners in scoring position stat line there right at the bottom. And you, you can see that Florida State really taking advantage when runners are in that scoring position, really clutch hitters. Virginia Tech usually very clutch when it comes to those situations, but not producing so far in this series against Florida State. Now for Florida State, taking a look at their starting lineup player to watch today in Kaylee Mudge. Two doubles, two singles, and a few runs to her credit this series. By far and away has been the best player in the Florida State lineup this series. On the other side for Virginia Tech, Emma Lemley, by far and away the ace for Virginia Tech in the circle for the third time this series. That rise ball so good at getting so many hitters to swing and miss. Lemley will get the starting nod in the circle today. Yeah, so we will see Limley bring that rise ball. As you said, Tyler, we'll be also seeing a little bit of mix of her changeup as well. Those are her two main pitches, but the high velocity, that's really where, where she kind of tricks up people a little bit. So we'll see what Limley brings in the circle for today. While the leadoff batter in Devin Flaherty will step into the batter's box for Florida State. So we're ready to play softball here on what's becoming a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. And a foul ball will begin today's game with an 0-1 count to Flaherty. The Florida native this season at batting 316 has been having a pretty solid series so far here in Blacksburg. Lemley. Trying to find the outside part of the plate, just unable to do it through the first couple of pitches. As Flaherty evens up the count to one and one. And we'll see on both sides for hitting wise for the Seminoles as well as the Hokies, very patient hitters. So the umpire strike zone is gonna be something to pay attention to today. Flaherty showing off that plate discipline as well, able to take that pitch downstairs to work herself ahead in the count. That's something we saw this series with Lemley so far, a walk yesterday, two walks the day before. She's already behind in the, her first batter. Only three pitches in, but down in the count 2-1. And definitely not a normal situation for Lemley to find herself in, but that also might, again, speak to the hitters for Florida State, much more patient than maybe the other opponents that Lemley has faced so far this season. She is known to be a strikeout pitcher. She gets a lot of hitters swinging on her rise ball out of the zone. Florida State much more patient, though. Able to find the zone on that hitter's 3-1 count to push the count full. Flaherty's been a great leadoff batter for Florida State, including two singles, one to lead off the game yesterday. And when Florida State can get runners on early in the inning, they typically find themselves scoring later that frame. Rounder to first and a nice grab by Bailey who steps on the bag. Good heads up play from Bailey defensively to begin our ball game. And I'm sure we'll see a lot more from Bailey defensively. She is a staple on the infield, a senior there leading her team. We saw a couple great defensive plays. Saw her do the splits actually in last night's game. Virginia Tech's defense struggled a bit this series with airs in the field, but a nice grab by Bailey to open it as Kaylee Mudge, who we mentioned briefly prior to the first pitch, steps into the batter's box. A Winter Springs native, two for four yesterday. Game one of this series, two for four, yet again batting 500 on this series. 
And see Limley throwing in a, a drop ball mix in there. Maybe that's a different strategy she might be bringing to game three today is maybe not so much relying on the rise ball, but a little bit more balanced mix between a few pitches. For the most part, Florida State able to get to Lemley this series, including in the seventh inning yesterday when Lemley came in a relief situation for Lindsey Grine. Florida State able to put up four runs on Lemley in the top of the seventh to swipe the game away from Virginia Tech. So the Hokies had a 3-2 lead entering the seventh inning yesterday. Ended up being a 6-3 decision in favor of Florida State. Big part of that, Lani Alameda in her 15th year. So much experience in that dugout and knowing that her team is not out of it regardless of situation. High pop-up. Potentially going out of play, but it will land in foul territory in between Aldridge and Bailey, who were both coming onto the ball. There's a miscommunication there between Aldridge at catcher, Bailey at first base, kind of glancing at each other. That should be Bailey's ball right there. Anytime the catcher is going to keep her mask on and be looking up, that's a much easier play for a fielder to make, but it seems like a little bit of a miscue there. Hopefully Lindley comes back strong here, and that's not a play for the Hokies have to pay for. Well, a big part of that, there's not too much foul territory here at Tech Softball Park. We've seen a few this series just glance off the screen, taking it out of play, and it was tough to tell when it was coming down whether or not it would hit that screen or not. Yeah, and with the screens being so high as well, that is kind of another visual obstacle for players as the ball's coming down, kind of skimming off of that netting. Well, we mentioned the plate discipline, and it pays off for Mudge. She takes the free pass on the base on balls. Florida State has its first base runner of the game. Walks not a common thing for Lemley, but again, not every day are you facing patient hitters like Florida State. It'll be important for her to stay focused now, make sure that walk doesn't turn into anything else. Kaylee Harding, the next batter for FSU. Harding able to get a double in each of the games so far. That extends a double streak up to six straight doubles. And saw just there Florida State, one of the best in the nation, drawing walks. And Lemley, not a pitcher who usually misses the zone too much, but Mudge able to work a walk out of number 27. And Seminole's a a great hitting team, but also on the, the flip side of that, also very patient seeing the walk second in division one. It's probably also contributes to how they are getting so many doubles because they wait for that great pitch to swing at. Possibly working the pitchers into deep counts that are more advantageous for the hitters to get a better looking pitch and they're able to capitalize on that to really rack up a lot of doubles. Harding, one of the best on this team in getting two baggers, six doubles in six straight games. For the seminal first baseman, but Lemley will get her swinging. There's that rise ball for the first time today as we sing, see a batter go down in Harding. Yeah, look at this spin, very tight spin. That ball is just jumping up in that upper part of the zone and an outside pitch, so two very difficult zones for the right-hander outside as well as up. The two-way player, Mac Leonard. We'll see her in the circle in the bottom half of the inning as the starting pitcher today for Florida State. Saw her in a couple different situations. The designated player in game one, first baseman yesterday, and the starting pitcher today. That's I think that definitely earns the title of utility player. Yeah. Usually our utility players are, are uh, defensive players, you know, that can play infield as well as outfield. But I think for Mac Leonard to be able to be a pitcher and also play defensively and hit successfully, that's the ultimate utility. Well, Leonard getting hit by the pitch there just right on that outside part of the knee. And you see that drop ball spin from Limley. Really good breaking pitch. A great place to put it to inside for that lefty hitter, just a little bit too inside. Well, it does put 
Couple of runners aboard for the Seminoles. With two outs, Janai Kerr. So far this season, collecting a 348 batting average. The Seminoles have been so good this series at batting with two outs. We've seen multiple two out rallies from the Knolls this series, trying to start one up here after the Leonard hit by pitch. The Hokies defense need to stay on their toes here. These first two batters being put on base from Limley, but the defense still needs to stay strong. Talked about yesterday's game. The first run Florida State scored was after a double play with two outs, and there's a fly ball to left. Florida State will get the first run of the ball game, and another two-out rally from the Knolls pays off. It's 1-0 in the top of the first. Well, a great job by Janai Kerr here, getting her hands up on that outside corner. Great contact here, going with the pitch. Seems like Limley maybe just left that ball at too perfect of a height. Just knocking that into the left center hole. Well, is able to advance to second, so runners at second and third. Big opportunity for Hallie Waycaser. Skips in the dirt and a good block there from Aldridge. Saw yes. Leonard about to take off. Yeah, definitely seeing a lot more of that drop ball from Limley so far in this first inning. I think that's a great strategy and something that the Hokies need to continue doing throughout the rest of the end, end part of this season and going into postseason is if Limley's going to be pitching several games, how does she look different each time she comes onto the mound? You know, not mixing that rise ball too frequently now versus game one when we saw Lemley, that's that's the go-to pitch. That is her best pitch, but she has to have something else in her back pocket to be able to make a reappearance in a series. Florida State able to somewhat get to Lemley this series. Lemley in eight and two thirds so far this series against Florida State allowing 12 hits and nine runs. FSU finding a way to get to the Hokies ace. Only one hit so far off the Janai Kerr RBI single. Just trying to frame a pitch, won't get it from the home plate umpire in David Reinecker. That's a great ball to take there by Hallie Waycaser. Just on that outside corner, also an off-speed pitch. That's not the one that she wants, especially she's now in that 3-1 count. She has kind of all of the power coming into this next pitch. A fly ball to left. Back goes Ritter, looks up. It's off the top of the wall. Two runs will score for Florida State. And the Knolls are controlling early in the top of the first inning. Three to nothing. And an RBI double for Hallie Waycaser. So exactly right there, you can tell that Waycaser was just waiting for her pitch, staying very patient, let that off-speed pitch go so she can get this inside belt-high pitch that she just ropes a few inches higher, and that is gone. Just right off the top of the wall, too. Hey. And, and an interesting switch I, I had not noticed was Emma Ritter in left field. We saw last night she was in center field, and... So they've moved, the Hokies have moved uh, Kelsey Brown over into center field. Both phenomenal outfielders, but Kelsey Brown has spent a little bit more time in left field, recently at least. Tracks the ball very well. Hokies have made a couple defensive changes for game three of this series. Over at shortstop, Seaton Teagan Thrunk getting the starting nod instead of Rachel Castine today. Yeah, Castina's been at shortstop the last several games for the Hokies. Last night, unfortunately, had a couple miscues, couple errors in her position. Putting Tegan Thrunk back into the lineup. Offensively, the two are pretty comparable, so it is going to come down to who's performing in the field as to who continues to get that start at the shortstop position. So Dak, the Texas A&M transfer, Looking to battle with two strikes. 
Swing and a miss, two strikeouts for Lemley. Bottom of the first coming up with the Hokies getting their first opportunity when we come back on the ACC Network Extra. Well, the Seminoles getting off to a fast start, but Mac Leonard, who came up to the plate for FSU, now in the circle for FSU. Shelby, what have you seen from Mac Leonard this year? Yeah, so she's going to be bringing her balls mostly in the, the upper 60s, so a little bit more velocity than maybe the Hokies saw yesterday, but a great mix of different pitches. You see there, screw, rise, curve, also developed a drop ball. Kind of an unheard of combination now at Division I level is most pitchers are kind of specializing in a couple, maybe two, maybe a third pitch. That's maybe not as strong, but we're going to see there. Leonard has a, a great mix of pitches. And the big thing that is going to be important for her and, and looking out for Cam Fagan in the two spot for the Hokies, very consistent across the whole season, but against Florida State, five for seven. So we'll start off with Kelsey Brown, does a great job of getting on base, but Cam Fagan really a, a production to look for in the Hokies lineup. Well, Kelsey Brown leads things off, and we saw it all series, but FSU instantly bringing that infield in for the notorious slap hitter as she comes forward on it. But it's been a very fun series to watch Kelsey Brown just able, despite FSU's defense playing in, to beat out the ball to first base. She's been so good this series, batting 500 between the last two games. And Brown has really kind of just, just recently come back into the mix for the Hokies after an injury earlier this season. Just the last couple of weeks getting some, some more playing time, and really capitalizing on that. Well, the Hokies and Pete DeMore hope that they can capitalize on Mac Leonard being in the circle today. Three straight pullbacks from Kelsey Brown to work herself ahead in the count 3-0 against Leonard. But DeMore working last season to get Virginia Tech all the way up to the Super Regional, has been coaching this team throughout, and has really said, you mentioned the high velocity. Pete DeMore has said time and time again that the velocity is what Virginia Tech prefers to hit. They prefer the higher velocity pitchers. Yeah, absolutely. They track the ball very well when pitchers are throwing more in those upper 60s. They have struggled with pitchers throwing in the, the lower 60s or, or more of a spin type pitcher. So this matchup with Leonard is, is probably that something that makes Coach DeMora a little, a little excited for this final game. Kelsey Brown trying the leadoff walk. And Brown able to get the first and a big opportunity for the Hokies. Of course, when you get that leadoff runner on, it just increases their chances. And right now, Virginia Tech more or less needs that. A lot of speed on the bases as well, but down in a 3-0 hole. You have a lot of powerful hitters coming up in the lineup for Virginia Tech, trying to maybe get back into this ball game after Florida State more or less dug that hole in the first inning. Cam Fagan, the Donnellan, Florida native, taking on a team from her home state in the Seminoles. Has been having a really good series as well. Just in yesterday's game, Cam Fagan able to go two for three, including a double in the first inning in which the Hokies were able to strike and draw first blood yesterday to take a lead over Florida State, but Fagan has been that talent that Pete DeMores looked to this series against the Knolls. Yeah, Fagan's done a great job in the field as well, really making several hustle plays at second base. High bouncing ball allows the speedy Brown to hustle over to second base and a runner in scoring position with nobody away for Virginia Tech. This could definitely be an advantageous situation that the Hokies can take advantage of. Seems like that ball might have skipped up on Edenfield, the catcher for Florida State, kind of limping off that pitch a little bit. It was an interesting pitch that more or less just hit the dirt and popped straight up off of Edenfield. Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe popped off of well, her body or or potentially her, her gear because she was kind of confused too of where the where the ball was at. So we'll see another look at it here. 
Yeah. So it seemed maybe right off of her glove and then maybe off of the inside part of her leg too, right there on top of her knee. That gear only covers up so much of the body. She seems to be shaking it off just fine. But that does advance Kelsey Brown over to second. With all of that speed, she is very likely to make that trip second to home on anything to the outfield. Just reaching for a pitch to foul it off. Something we've seen a lot of this series, and especially yesterday from the Hokies in general, just able to more or less foul off a two-strike count until they get something they want to hit. Vegan successful so far this series against the Knolls, but she'll swing and miss on a Mac Leonard pitch for out number one. Not something you see too often from Fagan. And this is the second off-speed pitch in a row that Leonard has thrown to Fagan. Fouled off one of them, and that one fools Fagan there. You see she just can't hold her weight back, can't hold that bat back on that off-speed pitch. So that is something that has tripped up the Hokies this season is mixing of the off-speed. So we'll see if that is kind of a, a go-to pitch for Leonard. Leonard able to get a couple of different Hokies swinging and missing. Addie Green stepping into the batter's box. She takes a swing at the first offering from Leonard and comes up empty. Inside scoots away and yet again on a pitch that gets away from Edenfield. Brown takes advantage and ends up at third base, 60 feet away from the Hokies, cutting into the deficit. Virginia Tech getting a couple free passes here on some pitches. I won't say that those are wild pitches. Those are going off of the glove there by Edenfield. And what's difficult for a catcher again when they are on, on the other side of a pitcher like Leonard mixing several different pitches as you're seeing so many different kinds of spins. It is sometimes hard to keep your eyes tracked on it. You know, versus a, if a pitcher's go-to is, you know, is their rise ball, you're kind of seeing that same spin really frequently. And for Leonard, she's mixing three or four different kinds of spins, mixing a different speed. It's not an easy position to be in that catcher role. Laddie Green trying to bypass the chances of another wild pitch or pass ball as she's trying to get the job done herself with a base hit, but she'll take a pitch inside to even up the count. And for Mac Leonard, it's nice to see her get a strikeout against Hammond Fagan, in her last appearance over a month ago on March 11th against Oklahoma State, where she couldn't record an out in that appearance. So nice to see her step back into the groove against one of the top 25 teams in the country. That was a great stop there by Edenfield. Good block right off of her chest, keeping it in front of her. Anything past home plate, as you said, Tyler, there's not a lot of space in the foul territory here at Tech Softball Park, but However, it bounces off of that padding behind home plate. You never know what direction it is going to go. And with Brown's speed at third, every kind of block that Eden can get, Edenfield can get in front of her is, is key. A big chop and a second straight strike out there. Leonard's been looking in control after that walk to Kelsey Brown to lead off the inning. You see the drop spin there. You see it just kind of fall off that shelf right below. Addie Green's bat. Well, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Mac Leonard. Brings up the Hokie first baseman, Jamie Bailey. Hoping not to strand a runner at third base in the first inning when Kelsey Brown was able to get up to second base with nobody out. Got up to third when there was one out in the inning, and now Bailey will either need to reach or get another pass ball or wild pitch to allow Brown to come in to score. There's a line drive straight to Weisbrook in the flex position to end the inning. Hokies leave a runner stranded at third. Knowles lead 3-0. We'll be back for the second on the ACC Network Extra. Seminoles holding a 3-0 lead as we enter the top of the second inning here on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Emma Lemley has been quite impressive in the circle for Virginia Tech. 
had this first inning here against Florida State. We see her give up a leadoff walk and then a hit by pitch. But what Limley is known for is the strikeout. You see here that she is leading there against uh, several ACC teams. Their entire pitching staffs have, uh, have less strikeouts than Limley has on her own. So she definitely is somebody to uh, be fearful of a little bit in the circle, although this that first inning against Florida State maybe not showing off her strength. But we'll see how she comes back here in the second inning. Lemley able to notch two Ks to her record in the top of the first inning. She looks to rein in those base hits for FSU. Only two hits in the previous inning, but a big two RBI double by Hallie Waycaser highlighting the top of the first for FSU. As Michaela Edenfield, who we saw take a pitch off the knee when she was behind the plate in the previous frame, step into the batter's box for the first time today. We see two rise balls there from Limley, well out of the zone. See if she starts to mix some of her other pitches. Well, Edenfield, one of the best in plate discipline, has walked two times this series. And take a look back at last weekend's series against UVA, able to walk six times in ten, ten plate appearances against the Cavaliers. She's already worked herself ahead in the count 2-1 early in her plate appearance. Great mix of that change up there, really spotting it on that outside corner. Haddonfield in yesterday's ballgame going 0 for 1, did draw two walks, her lone two walks of the series so far. But she'll swing and miss, and Emma Lemley notching her third K of the afternoon. We see here, so those first two rise balls in the count really high out of the zone, and this is where Emma Lemley really shines, as she can move that rise ball around at different heights. And so that strikeout pitch you see there, that it's coming in, looks like it's about the belt height, and then that spin allows it to jump up over her opponent's bats. Well, to the bottom of the order, Josie Muffley, the transfer from Tulsa with the Golden Hurricane coming over to Florida State to play for the Garnet and Gold. Foul ball out of play, but we've seen Muffley in that shortstop position all three games of this series so far has collected a single and a hit in both of the previous games, trying to extend that streak to all three games here at Tech Softball Park. And back up the middle, it will be another hit for Muffley. She's gonna try to brown the throw in, and a nice sliding double for Josie Muffley. With one out here in the top of the second, a runner in scoring position for the Knolls. Well, Florida State, their scoring plays are mostly happening on doubles, so they have that power that you see here from Muffley, that outside pitch. She gets a good part of her barrel on the ball to hit it in that kind of right center gap or so, and then that aggressive base running to make sure that she is safe at second. That becomes the seventh double of the series for Florida State as a team. Leading the ACC in two baggers. Back to the top of the order for Flaherty. A fly ball looper to left, it drops in fair territory. A green light play at the plate is offline. And thinking about three was Flaherty, but Florida State able to strike in the first and now here in the second, building up to a 4 nothing lead early from TSP. Yeah, staying patient yet aggressive at the plate on both of these last two hits for Florida State. This one just drops in in front of left fielder Emma Ritter. She's going to hesitate a little bit to allow that ball to drop so that she can try to make this play at home, but 
the speed and the aggressive base running for Florida State, that is hard to defend. Haley Mudd shows bunt, pulls back. Only one out that Emma Lemley has recorded in the circle has been in the field. The remaining three have been strikeouts. Seems just whenever Florida State can get solid contact, the Knolls wind up on base. A hard hit ball towards right. Addie Green there to make out number two, tagging up for third. And getting there is Flaherty with two outs and bringing up Kaylee Harding. Well, Kaylee Mudge definitely could have made Virginia Tech continue to pay able to get a good amount of her barrel on this ball, turning on it. Great job by Addie Green, taking that drop step, getting the ball in quickly. That does advance the runner. Although two outs, runner at third, Florida State seeing the ball really well. This is a dangerous position for the Hokies to be in. Well, Harding, the first victim of the Lemley strikeout today. She swung and missed back in the first inning for strikeout number one of Lemley's day. She currently has three, but Harding has a big opportunity with two outs to potentially bring in Flaherty over from third. And Florida State, a team very difficult to pitch to because while they are patient, they're not gonna be chasing things off of the plate. So you have to bring it in tight and really great hitters when it comes to two outs. So even though there are two outs runner at third, they are still very dangerous offensively. And there's another for Florida State, an RBI single for Kaylee Harding brings in Flaherty and the Knowles pouring it on early here in the second inning. Already a five nothing hole for Virginia Tech. So that outside pitch Again, another hitter doing a great job going with the pitch, getting this through the infield, keeping the Seminoles alive, two outs. Florida State able to take advantage of their opportunities. And right as we were talking about RBIs with two outs, Florida State goes ahead and gets another against Emma Lemley. And it just seems Florida State has had some success against number 27 in the circle for Virginia Tech. Lemley already racking up 44 total pitches. The pitcher, Mac Leonard, trying to help her own cause. It's foul. Just tailed off towards right field. And Shelby, it seems like Florida State has just been able to see the ball very well out of Lemley's hand today. Leonard, you mentioned being the utility player that she is in the starting circle today as the pitcher. And for the Knowles, that pushes Avery Weisbrook in the flex position, the third baseman who we will see later this inning defensively over at third, not in the batting order today for FSU. Grounder, that's another base hit with two outs for Florida State. Harding getting aggressive and going for third. Pops off the glove, but Lemley, a nice job there to back up the play to stop things from getting haywire. Well, these first couple of games in this series, we talked about the defensive miscues happening, but what we're seeing here are, are solid base hits. There is not a an option for Virginia Tech to defend this and that aggressive base running you see no stop sign there for Harding she's immediately turning second base standing up at third that ball is coming in from the outfield make trying to make that play at third I think the smarter play would have been to cut that ball off make sure that the Florida State runner does not advance to second they are seeing the ball and hitting the ball very well right now if you can at least keep them one base away from that scoring position that's going to at least help out Virginia Tech score now five to zero. We see both pitchers for Virginia Tech warming up. You've got Molly Jacobson there on the left. Lindsey Grine on the right. 
Hard hit ball, fair territory. That drives in another two. It's two RBIs for Janai Kerr. She pulls in with a double, and FSU is in full control of game three of this series. I mean, they are not backing down, taking those aggressive hits, but again, still being patient on those balls that are outside of the zone. They have the great eye for, and then they are ready to just jump on anything they know that they can hit. Again, if Virginia Tech was able to stop that second runner from advancing to second, that would have been one less run scored. Change in the circle coming up for the Hokies. Ollie Jacobson takes over when we come back on the ACC Network Extra. All the Hokies go into the bullpen early to Molly Jacobson out of the bullpen today after Emma Lemley got rocked by the Knolls of Florida State. So we'll be seeing Jacobson throw a much different velocity coming off of Emma Lemley. So low 60s, really great with her drop ball. She'll mix in a changeup as well. You'll see some balls in the dirt, okay? And that is that is okay according to Molly Jacobson because she does not uh, want to leave those balls high against a great hitting team like Florida State. So at this point, the defense is probably going to be working a little bit more. The ball is going to continue to be put in play. Might be put in play a little bit harder, but a little bit more on the ground. A fly ball off the first pitch to Jacobson just in foul territory. That saves another run from scoring as Janai Kerr was about to cross home by the time that thing touched down. I think Jacobson needs to learn from those last several at-bats from Limley. Keeping the ball low, working the corners almost outside of the zone. That was very close to that left field line there. Well, Florida State, we mentioned how good they are with two outs. How about five for six today with two outs? And Shelby, prior to the game, you mentioned runners in scoring position. How about Florida State five for seven today with runners in scoring position? Yeah, they have a lot of confidence right now. Every player that's stepping up there, they're feeling the confidence from their teammates before them. So Hallie Waycaser steps back in. She had a two RBI double in the previous inning. She's the first batter to take on Molly Jacobson in the circle. High pop up. Bennett's looking for it and is able to find it. Almost looked like she was getting lost there for a moment, but able to make the catch. Florida State in full control. Seven nothing through an inning and a half on the ACC Network Extra. A packed house here from Blacksburg Tech Softball Park full for the series finale between Florida State and Virginia Tech. It's been all FSU so far and going to the bullpen for the first time today are the Seminoles. Allison Royalty coming out of the bullpen, the Arizona State transfer. Another arm that we will see for Florida State really deep with their pitching staff. Royalty we're going to be seeing in the mid 60s mixing several different pitches, rise ball, drop ball. So a more of a vertical change. It has a change up in there as well. Noted as a gutsy pitcher. I'm sure that means that she will not back down from any big name hitters, which the Virginia Tech lineup is sprinkled with. Well, you mentioned powerful hitters. Bree Peck leads off the inning, leading the team in home runs with 14 long balls on the year. Virginia Tech in general, one of the best teams at hitting the ball out of the park, leads the country in home runs. Meanwhile, Florida State and that pitching staff only allowing 12 home runs on the season through 46 games played. So it's Peck versus Royalty to begin the bottom of the second inning as Virginia Tech attempts to climb out of a big hole that Florida State has dug for them. Couple of changes defensively. Mac Leonard, who was the pitcher over at first. Harding, who was the first baseman, moving over to third. Weisbrook, who was in the flex, has been taken out of the game for now. High fly ball hit towards center. It's way caser underneath it. She'll reach up and make the catch for the first out of the frame. Good contact there from Peck, but straight into the glove of way caser in right center. Oh, 
brings up Emma Ritter. Hasn't had the most statistically impressive series against FSU this weekend. But it's one of the best in the country at putting the bat on the ball. She is one of the most challenging hitters to get out across all of Division I. She, as you said, Tyler, she really puts the ball in play. Not a lot of strikeouts compared to her number of plate appearances. One of the toughest to strike out only four times this season. She only struck out six times last season, so two seasons, only 10 strikeouts through them. That's some impressive numbers. Four strikeouts and almost 150 at-bats this season is just an unbelievable stat. So she has phenomenal hand-eye coordination there for her to be putting the ball in play. Additionally, the plate discipline for Ritter has been helping her out in that statistic. She'll ground one to Muffley over to first. High arcing throw across the diamond, but it gets the job done. Ritter starting this series now 0 for 8. Two up, two down to begin the Hokie half of the second. And although two quick outs there for the Hokies, they should be feeling confident, though, that they're, they're seeing good pitches, they're seeing hittable pitches, putting the ball in play, getting a good amount of the bat on it. So, you know, very different story than if the first two hitters went up there and are, you know, striking out looking or striking out swinging. So still seeing some, some confidence in their swings. Kelsey Bennett. Stepping into the batter's box for Virginia Tech. Bennett yesterday and 0 for 3 line, or excuse me, an 0 for 2 line, but did draw a walk. She'll pop it up, foul territory. Leonard, who just came from the circle over to first, ends the inning three up, three down as Royalty comes in and shuts down the Hokies. To the third we go on the ACC Network Extra. This team, Florida State, looking dominant in this game against Virginia Tech, looks to take home eight in its last nine appearances in the ACC Softball Championship. That'll be a really fun time of year when early May rolls around. Back up the middle, Katie Dack will ground out to Molly Jacobson to lead off the inning very quickly back in the top of the third. A great snag there by Molly Jacobson. This is where your height is a great advantage as a pitcher. She's able to reach up and grab that ball and for the speed that the Seminoles have. If that ball gets past her all the way to Cam Fagan at second, that, that's gonna be a very close play at first base. So that's actually a very big first out. Well, a big out number one, but as we've seen today, Florida State really benefiting once there are more outs on the scoreboard. Seems like they get better and better the longer the inning goes. Evenly split two, three runs in the first, four in the second. That infield pops one out of play. But you talk about Florida State and how much they've been able to dominate this series against Virginia Tech, who's been one of the top teams in the ACC. Haven't lost an ACC series all year. And the only games that they have lost in the ACC, which is only two games, have been in game two of the series. So good at starting and finishing a series as we're seeing here in game three. And you see there are only five ACC series lost since 2012. So that's 11 years of dominance from FSU. Yeah, that's an intimidating stat for sure for the other ACC teams. And a ripper into left field gets all the way to the wall. Edenfield heads for second base, the throw in, and sliding safely is Michaela Edenfield, another double. We talked earlier about how good FSU is at finding the path to second base on big hits. Finding another one here with one out for Edenfield. And they have the power for a double just as far as getting the ball to the outfield, but it is the base running for them to extend those hits into a double. Putting their runners in scoring position, therefore that's why their stat as far as runners in scoring position is so high. They have more opportunities than most teams. While we talk about doubles, 
Josie Muffley stepping back into the batter's box. She hit a double last inning. Ended up coming around to score later in the frame as well. Just seems like every part of this FSU batting order is able to find deep outfield grass. And the best teams, that's what it's like. So for the Hokies facing Florida State, this is like you're competing in a regional, a super regional potential College World Series game. You don't get a break from batter to batter. Every single pitch, you need to be staying focused. Every pitch matters. The defense has to stay on their toes. You, you cannot relax against a team like Florida State. Well, Virginia Tech trying to hold Florida State to just seven runs right now. A bunt laid down by Muffley. Jacobson on to first, and it's dropped by Bailey. Into score comes Edenfield. And Gaffs in the field for Virginia Tech yet again come back to bite them as the Knolls have now scored in all three innings. Well, this is just really showing the championship kind of team that Florida State is, is of course they can deliver on the doubles and, and scoring plays, but they can also mix in the short game here. You see Muffley dropping this bunt right in front of the pitcher. Great fielding by Molly Jacobson, but not able to make the throw. It is a difficult play for pitchers. The overhand throw, we frequently see pitchers make an error on that overhand throw, especially a bunt situation where you have to be quick with that. And usually Jamie Bailey, we give her all kinds of credit for scooping up all kinds of pitches thrown, at, thrown her way at first base, but not able to scoop that one. The air, the first of the day for Virginia Tech. It does go against Molly Jacobson in the scorebook. But back to the top of the order. A quick first out to Katie Dack as she grounded out to Jacobson to lead off the inning. Since then, back-to-back -back batters have reached for the Knolls. Runner goes, no throw from Aldridge. Great jump there from Muffley as she's able to swipe second. I'm not sure what the miscue was there. If Aldridge just wasn't staying. She seemed to be kind of relaxed on that. Maybe he was not. Not focused on that last play, needing to be aware of where those runners are at. Of course, it always helps when your fielders in your dugout let you know when that runner is going. Chopper heading over to third. Bennett to first, and Bailey can't scoop it again. Into score is Muffley to second goes Flaherty, and the Knowles have really cracked this thing open here in the third, up to a nine-run lead. Well, unfortunately for the Hokies, when Emma Lemley was in the game giving up walk, hit by pitch, several hits in a row. Now it looks like the defense is starting to kind of fall apart for them. A great scoop by Kelsey Bennett, but she doesn't really need to make that throw on the run. Of course, it looks beautiful, but she has plenty of time to set her feet and make a good throw here. A hard-hitting team like Florida State, they're going to score runs. They're going to get hits. You cannot have your defense giving up some plays like this that are, are somewhat guaranteed outs. Your pitchers can't be giving up hit by pitches and walks. Well, Flaherty is ruled as a reach on air getting up to second base. As one of the most dangerous hitters for FSU and Kaylee Mudge is the next to grab a bat for the Knolls. A really dangerous situation for Molly Jacobson and the Hokies who are looking to limit the damage from Florida State, but meanwhile have the heart of the batting order coming up. All right, like I said, you do not get a break. So those couple defensive blunders, you gotta put those past you. You have to refocus, because you're getting another great hitter in the box. Grounder to short, thrunk the throw onto first. That one's in the glove for an out. Threatened back to third and making the tag was Bennett, but back in there safely. That aggressive base running we've seen all day from Florida State. Flaherty just able to get back on a closer play than it should have been. That's an important play there for the Hokies. Tegan Thrunk here able to keep her eyes on this ball as the runner passes her. Great job by Jamie Bailey hanging on to this in her glove and staying aggressive, really keeping the Florida State runners honest over there. Flaherty advancing to third on the play with two outs, but again, two outs is where Florida State seems to thrive. Five for seven today with two outs. 
Five of their eight hits today have come with two gone. And a big swing and miss from Harding. Struck out against Emma Lemley. This is her first appearance against Molly Jacobson, who came out of the pen last inning. The Knolls nearly threatening double digits, that 10th run 60 feet away at third. And that pitch just misses. That's a great spot for that. That drop ball in that low outside corner. Umpire doesn't like it enough to call it a strike, but that is a good placement. It's Jacobson just trying to figure out the zone. Every umpire a little bit different with their zone. As David Reinecker, the man behind the plate calling the balls and strikes, has called a 3-1 count so far. This is an important pitch coming up as a hitter's count for Harding here. While Jacobson wants to get that strike, it's important to not make that pitch too good. But instead, it's a ball in the pinion of the home plate umpire and a runners at the corner situation for the now first baseman, Mac Leonard. A big situation here that Virginia Tech just trying to get out of. We've talked about it at lengths of the two out offense for Florida State and it just seems to be relentless uh, puzzle that Virginia Tech cannot seem to figure out. As there's a fly ball hit towards deep left center. It's at the track, a home run for Mac Leonard. This game is wide open and it belongs to the Seminoles of, the, of Florida State. A 12-0 lead only in the third inning. Well, Mac Leonard making the Hokies really pay for those couple errors there. Molly Jacobson leaving this pitch way too much on the plate. Not enough tight spin there for that drop ball to fall off. Leonard stays aggressive, supplies that power. It looks like Jacobson is going to take a seat for today. Third pitcher being used today for Virginia Tech coming up. Lindsey Grine on in the circle when we come back for the Tech Softball Park on the ACC Network Extra. Another call to the bullpen for Virginia Tech sees Lindsey Grind, the freshman, come out in the circle to take on this extremely dangerous FSU lineup. Shelby, what do you like from Lindsey Grind? Yeah, well, Grind, considered the number two behind Emma Lemley, has a lot of similarities to Lemley, actually. Speed is a little bit lower, mid-60s, has a really good rise ball. She will mix in that changeup, and she's willing to throw it at any count. As you see there, first pitch already, she's going to mix in that changeup. Last night, Grind, we did see a lot of her changeup being used, and, and similar to that pitch you just saw, a lot of times it was in the dirt, so needing a little bit more control with that. We can't find the strike zone on the second pitch either. 2-0 count for Janai Kerr. Last night, Grind, the starting pitcher, had to come in in the seventh inning in which Florida State was dominating, came in for Emma Lemley, and more or less slammed the door on Florida State, pitched six innings, only allowing two runs. She's been the most successful pitcher against the Knolls so far. And Coach Demore, when he talks about Lindsey Grine, he says she wants the ball. She is a competitor in the circle. She wants to be there. She wants to be the one to come in and, and help her team. Definitely the right decision to bring her in in this moment. Definitely makes you think maybe she should have came in in place of Jacobson right after Limley exited the game. You have to wonder if it's a question of potential fatigue as she did pitch six innings just a night ago, but already back out in the circle. Only pitcher for Virginia Tech that has not been used is a two-way player in Bree Peck. There's a grounder to first. Bailey will just make the tag, stopping Janiker in her tracks. A big fly for Mac Leonard highlights a five spot in the top of the third. Hokies in a big hole trying to come back when we return on the ACC Network Extra. It's been a dominant day so far for the Seminoles of Florida State. Allison Royalty back into the circle. Florida State's pitching staff as a whole just so good this season. 
really their strength is mixing in several different pitchers. Also, those pitchers having different strengths to bring to the table. I think that is what makes Florida State such a, a dominant a championship team in the ACC and making several runs to the postseason. They're able to extend their pitchers' lives, almost the arms of their pitchers throughout the, the entire season versus relying on just a, one or maybe two aces. Virginia Tech bringing up two batters to the plate that have not seen an at-batter plate appearance today. Tegan Thrunk, the first. Kylie Aldridge standing on deck. Kelsey Brown in the hole. All three do up this inning as Thrunk fouls one off for the first strike of her at-bat. First time we're seeing Tegan Thrunk at the plate this series after Rachel Castine got the start at shortstop the previous two games. But one of the freshmen for Virginia Tech started off the season so good at the plate. Was having a batting average out of this world and has since come back down to earth a bit, but trying to find that groove against a tough Florida State squad. You'll notice we talked a lot about this on the broadcast last night of the, the defensive shifts you'll see in the outfield for Florida State against the Hokies. So showing their scouting, we'll see the left fielder hugging the line just by a couple steps. So a, a wide open left center gap. But they are definitely playing to the tendencies of Virginia Tech. Well, that gets through past the glove of Muffley as it rolls to the wall, and Tegan Thrunk finds herself at second base. That's a good way to start off an inning. Yeah, well, and that's, that scouting report can only help so much if you aren't executing it. So that gap in left center is wide open, but you're expecting a ground ball to your shortstop to be an easy play there, and it's going right underneath Muffley's glove. Very uncharacteristic play by her. So it's a two-base error against Muffley, the shortstop, to put a runner aboard for just the second time today for the Hokies, bringing up the catcher, Kylie Aldridge. Aldridge this series has been having a pretty successful time against FSU, all things considered, drawing a walk. No base hits as of yet against FSU, but that's something that she's been trying to figure out as the true freshman. A ground one to third, off the glove. A race to the bag and nobody's covering first, so Kylie Aldridge reaches first base. Just like that for the Hokies. Runners at the corners with nobody out, back to the top of the order. The Hokies finding any way to get themselves on base here, so pulling this inside pitch just down the line. Kind of scales up on her glove there. Runners at the corners now. It's ruled as the first base hit today for Virginia Tech. Especially that Tegan Thrunk two-bagger called a two-base error. That Aldridge hit is ruled as a base hit. Kelsey Brown swinging away on a pop-up to left. Mudge comes in, reaches up, and makes the play for the first out of the inning. With the runners at corners, nobody out. The two things you want to try to avoid are pop-ups and strikeouts, and unfortunately there for Kelsey Brown, she does one of the two. That's a little overly aggressive swing than I would have liked to see out of Brown. She has been hot lately, but with this really kind of precious situation that the Hokies have here with runners on base, Hokies need to stay patient. Let's see another first pitch swing there. Virginia Tech, typically one of the more aggressive teams at the plate that's helped them to their 84 home runs this season, nine of them belonging to Cam Fagan. An 0 for 1 line today. It's her first appearance against Allison Royalty, who came into the circle to start the second. And downstairs, a couple of changes in the field again as Bethany Keene takes over at first base for Leonard. Kerr and Centerfield no longer in the game. Instead, it's Belvi 
out in center field. So center and first base seeing a couple of defensive changes for FSU. Chopping ground ball. The Flaherty on to short for one. That's all it's going to get. It's an RBI ground out, and Virginia Tech has its first run of the ball game. Still down in a pretty big hole, but has to raise the confidence a bit getting that first run across. Well, the Florida State defense is not concerned about giving that up that one run. They still have that hefty lead, so going for this lead out is the right play there. Not even attempting for that double play throw. Definitely don't want to risk the error. So smart play by the middle infield. Well, it brings up Addie Green. Similar story to Cameron Fagan struck out against Mac Leonard, first appearance against Royalty. This series had a couple of really close games. As in the first game of the series, Virginia Tech, a swing away from tying or taking the lead a couple points in the ball game yesterday, allowing four runs in the top of the seventh to allow Florida State to come back. And Florida State said enough with the questions. We're gonna try to put it away early. And so far an 11 run lead in the third is doing that. Royalty doing a great job working the corners. Really touching all areas of the zone. We've seen her go up, we've seen her hit the outside, inside, as well as the low part of the zone. So keeping the Virginia Tech hitters on their toes. Well, for Florida State, does not get much easier after their trip to Blacksburg. Return home to Tallahassee to take on arch rival Florida in a midweek. And for coach, Ani Alameda, this is exactly the performance you wanted to see from your squad here coming in against a ranked opponent and just dominating in front of Virginia Tech's home fans. And a great crowd here at Tech Softball Park. I think they were hoping to have a little bit more length to this game than shutting it down by the fifth inning. So Hokies are going to need to put several more runs on the board to fend off that run rule. It's been really impressive seeing as the weather gets nicer here in Blacksburg, the more and more full Tech Softball Park seems to get. Right, it's easier to watch softball when there's no rain and it's not cold. And <laughs> the stands built out in left field. They were temporary for last year's regional and super regional. They've been installed here at Tech Softball Park for a majority of the season. Fly ball hit out to left field. It's deep looking up off the top of the wall for Addie Green pulling into second base cam. Fagan, it's a two out double for Addie Green to put runners at second and third. Well, great at bat by Addie Green, fouling some off, staying patient for her pitch. You see here a little bit lower, but also outside. And she does a great job keeping her weight back, going with the pitch. I've got to say, too, that this is a great play by Mudge in left field to not go for the attempt to catch this ball, but to just know it's going to be bouncing off the wall. So she is able to hold Cam Fagan at third. That is a very veteran play right there. Anybody else that goes for that ball, it's bouncing off of the wall. That runner is easily scoring. Ball inside, Jamie Bailey, the next batter. But for Virginia Tech, it's a one-two punch of stats that don't go their way. One for six today with runners in scoring position and one for three with two outs. The first two out hit was that Addy Green double that just occurred. A ball downstairs, Jamie Bailey working herself ahead of the count initially to Allison Royalty, who's allowed the first couple of base hits today to Virginia Tech in this frame and the first run to cross the plate. Bailey 
grounds one hard. It looked like initially it could have taken a bounce either way and just continued to roll off into deep foul territory. You see Bailey there kind of taking a, a little visual swing. What she's doing there is visualizing that her hands are staying on the inside part of the softball so she isn't pulling that too hard to the left field line. She notices the shift that's on in the outfield for her, so she needs to keep her hands inside the ball. A hard hit ball to left field. It's over the wall in foul territory. That's a great adjustment by Bailey right there. So the more that she can keep her hands inside the ball, the more this is going to stay in fair territory and give her some really good power. So she's understanding how she's being pitched to right now, staying on the inside part of the plate. She understands the defensive shift. She's adjusting her swing accordingly. So a 2-2 count, two away and two on. Hokies trying to dig into that lead. As there's a fly ball hit towards left field, it's deep, it's gone into the fans in left field over the wall. We've been waiting a while for the first home run this series. It finally comes for Jamie Bailey. A three-run shot to cut into the deficit. Well, Jamie Bailey is at her best when runners are in scoring position, when the pressure is on her. I love the way that she worked through this at bat. She made those small micro adjustments to her swing, and it pays off for her. So make it 12 to four after the home run, the 85th home run this season for Virginia Tech, leading the nation in home runs hit. Additionally, only the 13th home run allowed by a Florida State pitcher this year. And we haven't seen that home run on display so far this season, or excuse me, so far this series. That's usually the stat line that we are bragging about for the Hokies, finally able to show that off. Well, a decent shot of a confidence boost here. A four spot here in the bottom of the third. Hokies still trail by eight, but it's a good step in the right direction for the maroon and orange. Bree Peck flew out the opposite way towards right. And you take a look, Jamie Bailey with that home run up to 12. The only team in the country with four players with double digit home runs. A fly ball hit towards left, back at the track, reaching up and unable to grab it as much, but keeps it in the ballpark. Heading over for third with a triple is Bree Peck. And the hits are starting to come for Virginia Tech. I thought Bree Peck was gonna be adding one more to her stat line for the home runs, but this one does stay in the park. Mudge tracks it really well. We'll see here, she tracks it very well too. The warning track seemed like she was blocking the sun with her glove. She goes to attempt that catch, just not able to secure it. So there you see she's blocking that sun. She ke she gets kind of that ball in her eyesight, but not able to execute on it. And also props to Bree Peck being aggressive on the base path. She is not assuming that this is a home run. She was sprinting all the way around to be safe at third getting herself in that scoring position. Sometimes you'll see hitters on that kind of a ball think you know, it, it's going out and already start trotting before you get to first, and that can could have stranded Peck at first or even second, but she was aggressive with that base running. That's gonna pay off for the Hokies, another runner in scoring position, two outs. The bat's starting to come alive with Emma Ritter coming to the plate, a quick meeting in the circle for FSU. We're hearing some excitement out of the Hokie fans now. These last several runs have definitely woken everybody up. And for Virginia Tech, what a way to bring their fans back into the ball game. We were just talking about how, what of a packed house it is at Tech Softball Park. And Virginia Tech can rely on that fan base that has come out for a Saturday softball game as Ritter sends a charge to one into left field. It's deep, it's up, it's gone. Emma Ritter, a two-run shot. The Hokies clawing their way right back into this one. These Hokie hitters cannot be stopped. They are seeing the ball big at the home plate. 
Emma Ritter just tacking on another one. That was ball was very close to foul. Definitely was keeping our eyes on it. She turns on this inside pitch. Seemed to be a rise ball spin there. Left a little bit too low. And it's going right past that, that foul line. How about that? The fan out in left field brought the glove and the glove paid off. Making a nice catch out in left field, I'm sure. Definitely a loyal Hokie fan, I'm sure. They know that that can get some action out there on that grass area. I was going to say, I'm sure Florida State wishes that that fan out there was dressed in garnet and gold on that one. I think some more young fans have started to hover in that area, hoping that they get their <laughs> chance to catch one as well. A ball downstairs, 1-1. One, one. Count two home runs this inning. Virginia Tech as a team has hit for the cycle this inning with a single, double, triple, and home run through eight batters. There's a liner over to second, but speared by Flaherty. A six spot for the Hokies. Cuts the deficit in half. We've got a ball game heading into the fourth on the ACC Network Extra. Well, Virginia Tech showing off the bats and the offense in the bottom of the third. Florida State, however, has been doing that the same. Shelby, this Florida State offense really firing on all cylinders. Yeah, very balanced, very consistent up and down the lineup. See these numbers here, several players over 300 with their batting average. So while that's a big confidence boost for the Hokies to rack up some of those runs offensively, they now need to back that up defensively. You see Lindsey Grind returning to the circle. Well, it's almost like the Seminoles have been counting three, four, five in innings one, two, three. Trying to add on to that. And although Virginia Tech added six runs in the bottom of the third. Don't forget that Florida State has hammered the Hokies pitching staff in all of the three previous innings so far. Well, it definitely helps as a pitcher too to have that run support a little bit. So grind getting in the circle, hopefully feeling a little bit more confident. Grind came in faced one batter in Janai Kerr in the previous frame. It was a ground out to first. Allie Waycaser, Katie Dack, Michaela Edenfield do up this inning for the Knolls. A ball downstairs, a four pitch walk to lead off the inning. Waycaser getting the free pass. She's on base for the second time today. For Lindsey Grind, mentioned she did a excellent job for the Hokies yesterday, and despite allowing eight hits to the Seminoles, only allowing two runs. And of course, it doesn't matter how many hits you allow; it's more or less keeping that run line to the lowest it can be to give your offense a chance in that game. So Grind doing that job yesterday. She hopes to continue that trend today. And so far, she's only faced two batters, but has only allowed a walk through two. However, five straight balls to open the fourth inning. And make it six on a pitch that just misses inside on a righty-lefty matchup. Keen getting her first plate appearance of the day. As another will miss, but Bethany Keene coming in to play first base in the previous frame. I'm hearing some dissatisfaction from the Hokie fans, wondering where is this pitch exactly in the strike zone? That one seemed to be at the right height. And finally, getting a strike by Keene is Grine after seven straight balls opened up the inning. Runner goes, Aldridge, the throw down on a walk. So the throw down will not end up mattering. 
as back-to-back -back walks open the inning, putting runners at first and second with nobody out for Michaela Edenfield, the eight-hole batter in this Florida State batting order. You see Kylie Aldridge, the catcher, going out, having some words with Grine, discussing that strike zone, I'm sure. Figuring out a, a better strategy to get a few more called strikes without having to give up any hits to the Seminoles. So Keen at first, Waycaser at second, and just a quick conversation. Cameron Fagan, the second baseman, also coming in to talk to Lindsey Grine as well. Edenfield, a dangerous hitter. Had that one out double that began the five run inning in the previous frame. Grounder gets by the glove of Bennett and trickles into the left field corner. In to score is Waycaser. Red light put up for Bethany Keene. It's a RBI double for Michaela Edenfield and the Knowles scoring in all four innings they've played in so far. This is a hard hit ball by Edenfield, so a drop ball that doesn't quite drop off. Maybe a little bit of off speed there. That's a hard shot to third base. It does roll all the way into the corner. So the Knowles saying to the Hokies, you can put up six runs in the bottom of the third, but we're going to come back and score ourselves. Two runners in scoring position with nobody out for Josie Muffley. They are going to score Edenfield's hit there as a double, not an error. I agree with that. That's a way too hard of a hit to be charging an error to Bennett at third. It's a 1-0. Called strike. So Florida State continues to threaten on the base paths with runners at second and third. Shows bunt, but fouled off. And saw Muffley attempt that bunt a couple innings ago as well. Excuse me, just last inning. So a really common theme for Florida State is the transfers. You see here on roster the list of transfers, six different transfers for the Seminoles from all different places around the country. And that seems to be a real common theme or be beginning to be more common at the Division I level. Uh, the swing and a miss as Muffley goes down on strikes. Big first out for Virginia Tech. It's a great pitch here by Grine, an awesome outside drop ball. And just falls off and really just fools Muffley. Seemed like Muffley was late to the party on that swing. Back to the top of the batting order. Flaherty already getting her fourth at bat. At a at bat in all four innings so far. She'll take a called strike. The grind doing a great job now making some adjustments to the umpire strike zone. Getting a few more called strikes. Oh, one grounder just off the glove. It trickles to Thrunk. Everyone is safe as Keene comes in to score. 14 to six, the Seminoles putting together one of their best offensive showings on the season here at TSB. And Flaherty able to get some good pop off of her bat here. Hard one hop in that five, six hole. Bennett sticks her glove out for it just tips off. So the ball is still able to stay in the infield, but does give up a run. Second hit of the afternoon for Flaherty as Keaton comes in to score. Staying still at second was Edenfield as Kaylee Mudge. Tomahawk Chop has broken out here at Tech Softball Park. A really good contingency of Florida State fans making the trip up from Tallahassee. By car, just about 10 hours between Blacksburg and Tallahassee. Haley Mudge, who 
has been so good for FSU this series. No for two lines so far. She'll flare one out towards left field. Hooking, but into the glove of Emma Ritter, tagging up and heading for second and third. Good base running there. Edenfield now at third, Flaherty at second. A nice tag up on the foul out to left field. And Florida State showing off that base running yet again. It's a great play by Ritter tracking this ball all the way to that left field foul line. She almost overran it a little bit, but was able to still make the catch. With runners at second and third, two runs have scored this inning for FSU. If the outs recorded here to Kaylee Harding, it would be the least the Knowles have scored in an inning so far today. But as we've mentioned, FSU excels when there are two outs in the inning and with two runners in scoring position, have a chance to put a couple more on the scoreboard. Yeah, really the ideal situation for Florida State, both of those runners in scoring position and two outs, and you have Harding up to bat. All things looking in favor for the Seminoles. Harding today, a one for two line. Threatening is Florida State. Two in scoring position. And back up the middle, a base hit for Harding. In to score is Edenfield. Flaherty gets the green light, a two RBI single for Kaylee Harding. And the Knowles showing no mercy to the Hokies, up by 10, 16 to six. Yeah, coming back offensively there, not worried about those six runs given up in the bottom of the third. They are staying focused in the batter's box, getting some good pitches, taking some good swings. Continuing to rack up the runs. Called strike for Leonard as she steps in. Been having a very good game today. Each time she's come up to the plate, she's later come around to score. Back up the middle, but into the glove of Brown for the third out of the inning. Another four runs cross the plate for Florida State, their most runs in a game in three years. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth on the ACC Network Extra. It was a big inning in the last frame for Virginia Tech as Jamie Bailey goes yard and a big home run for Emma Ritter. And an even better play by a fan out in left field making the diving catch on the Ritter home run as the Hokies put up six. But Florida State says enough of that. We're putting in our race. Katherine Sandercock takes the circle. The Virginia native comes in for the third time this series against Virginia Tech. Shelby, what do you like about Katherine Sandercock? Well, again, very dominant for Florida State, a great leader for the pitching staff. And she has a, a really great attitude and kind of personality in the circle as well that we've seen already in this series. She doesn't let you know missed calls for her pitches kind of bother her. She doesn't let any kind of hits rattle her too much. You'll see here there are those stats to back up her dominance. I love the stat there of her strikeouts to ball ratio is just insane. Does not give up a lot of walks. She is dominant when it comes to the strikeouts. Also a similar statement that we usually make about Limley. So now we'll see how Sandercock is gonna be facing Virginia Tech's hitters. You know, we know that they are very talented and really showed that off in the last inning. Well, Virginia Tech brought up nine batters in the previous frame, so the same three batters that led off the third inning for Virginia Tech are the same three batters leading off the fourth in Thrunk, Aldridge, and Brown. And Tegan Thrunk, she did get aboard via an air by the shortstop in Muffley, but they'll take what you can get if you're Virginia Tech able to use that to ride to a six-run inning. A sitting Allison Royalty allowed five hits, six runs, but because of that air, all six of those runs were unearned against her line. Brunk waves that one outside. And for Sandercock, she's had an interesting statistical series against Virginia Tech, came in yesterday, recorded the save game one earn the win, so a win and a save in two games, and now coming in 
here in game three with her team up by 10. Or two outside. For Sandercock, you take a look back at game number one that occurred on Thursday night. Was unable to record a strikeout in six innings of work. Got one yesterday. So it's not been striking out a lot of Hokie hitters, but has been using her defense really well to record outs. Back up the middle, Muffley able to make the grab throw on the first for the first out of the inning. And there you see that defense shining. Great play by Muffley there to kind of put her body in front of it. You see her kind of grabbing onto her belly, really took a hit on that one. Kylie Aldridge. Nine-hole batter for Virginia Tech. Singled back in the third inning. The freshman for Virginia Tech has had to take some time to figure out her role at the plate coming out of high school, but nice to see her get a single against one of the top teams in the country in the previous frame, and she's looking to do some more damage with this at-bat here. Yeah, Aldridge really just needing to find a way to get on base. Try to spark the Hokies here. It would be much better for them to put on at least a few runs in this bottom of the fourth before they go into the fifth and have to feel a little bit more pressure. Aldridge working an even 1-1 one, one count through two pitches against Sandercock. Right now, as it stands, if the lead holds for Florida State, it would be a run rule in five. It's a high popper into the crowd. And when we had a nice catch out in left field on a home run, the seas part behind home plate to allow that ball to land on the bleachers. A very different approach. They didn't bring their gloves like the kids out in left field. <laughs> no, but you, you get maybe one opportunity a game if you're lucky to make a play. You, you have to try for it. Aldridge now facing a two strike count. Sandercock tries to get her to chase outside, just couldn't get it. For Virginia Tech, the road after Florida State does not get much easier. The lone series remaining here from Tech Softball Park is against Clemson, who is currently second in the ACC, just behind Florida State. High pop-up behind home plate. And really, in the, those next several weeks, like you said, Clemson on the radar, but then you're starting to prepare yourself for the ACC tournament. You're starting to prepare yourself for postseason. So really having this tough competition near the end of the season is probably a good thing for the Hokies. They had a really strong beginning of the season, traveling a little bit more in the preseason time, and then now really hitting a lot of top teams. Had Duke several weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. Florida State now, Clemson on the radar. So the Hokies have kind of organized their schedule in a way to prepare them for a postseason. A couple of non-con road games going up to West Virginia to take on Marshall on Tuesday. We mentioned number six, Clemson coming to town for the final series here from Tech Softball Park, and then a regular season finale against in-state foe in the Liberty Flames. Definitely don't overlook the herd of Marshall that they had a great game against Alabama recently. Huge support as a, a home game for Marshall. I think I'm required to plug Marshall as my husband is an alumni there. So got to be honest about that one. But that was, was great to see a mid-major team really competing with, with a, uh, a real championship team in Alabama. Alabama looking to make some noise themselves in the postseason, but for Virginia Tech, struggling this series against Florida State, one of the top teams as Aldridge jammed 
off the barrel over to first base in time of 6-3 ground out. Back-to-back -back ground outs to Muffley to open up the bottom of the fourth, back to the top of the order for Brown. But this is a Virginia Tech team who's more or less looking forward to the postseason. The slate is swiped clean. The records don't mean anything once you get into postseason softball. And that's where you have to play your best. So learn how to take on one of the top teams, try to battle through some adversity, and take those lessons into the postseason, I think is the message for Pete Damore and his squad. Foul ball off the ankle. That can't feel too good for Kelsey Brown there. Kelsey Brown, a tough kid. Her, her body takes quite the beating as a slapper. You see here, it's a good ball to swing at, but it's off that inside part of her barrel, so it does go straight down onto her foot, maybe right on the, on the toe. We've all felt that pain. You stub your toe on the couch, on the bed. <laughs> a little bit different when it's a 65-mile-an-hour uh, softball coming at you. Yeah, definitely don't want to be Kelsey Frown's shoes right now. I can only <laughs> imagine just – it's not that intense searing pain, but it's that it's that annoying pain where it just kind of eats away at you Lingers a little bit. a little yeah. bit, yep. And as a slapper, you know, her, most of the time when she's swinging, her feet are moving. You know, she's not uh, like the traditional right-handed hitter that's going to stand and swing. But she'll slap it over towards first foul territory. I do see her limping a little bit, so that that last ball kind of staying with her a little. Let's see if she needs to take a little bit more time to figure it out. She's going to step back in the batter's box. And I guess the question now is if she reaches, depending on how she goes to first base, do you potentially use a pinch runner? Yeah, that's an interesting question because Kelsey Brown is arguably maybe your best base runner. But if she is injured in the lower half of her body, then she might not be as useful. She's still battling an 0-2 count. He'll check her swing on a pitch high. There are several base runners within the Virginia Tech lineup. They do a, a good job of mixing in all of their roster. Everybody has a role to contribute. That's a pretty frequent thing for Coach DeMore to be subbing in pinch hitters and, and pinch runners pretty frequently. Haven't seen a substitution in the field besides pitcher today. Swing and a miss. Three up, three down, go the Hokies. We're through four. Knowles lead by 10 here on the ACC Network Extra. Florida State's been showing off a 10-run, 16-6 lead, and all the confidence in the world belongs to the Knowles. They have a saying, unconquered, and they have been unconquered so far here from Blacksburg. Tough schedule coming up, however, taking on in-state rival and arch rival Florida in a home-and-home and then a couple of tough ACC series with Notre Dame and Louisville. We talked a lot about the strength of the final part of the schedule for Virginia Tech, and it looks like Florida State has kind of lined themselves up in a similar way, keeping their rivalry games, which is a really important game. Not just a, your standard rivalry in-state game, but it's a, a, top, a top 25 component. So Janai Kerr. Jimmy Belvi leads the inning off for FSU. Defensive change out in center field, so we saw Brown hit that foul ball off of her ankle. Bree Peck now takes over in center field for Brown. You have to hope for the best for Kelsey Brown after that foul ball off the foot. And she's been plagued with some injuries earlier in this season, so for her to come back these last couple weeks and really step right in and be a key part of the Hokies lineup. Definitely hope that Kelsey Brown is that foul ball off the foot is nothing serious. Belvi will fly one out to left in her first step out of the game. Emma Ritter hauls it in for the first out of the inning. It's Waycaser 
A one for two line today, the next batter for the Garnet and Gold. Mentioning it a bit earlier today, but been really impressed with how many Florida State fans have made the trip to Blacksburg. Not an easy place to travel to in Blacksburg, but really good number of FSU fans, especially occupying that first base side over the dugout. But a fly ball to center field, jumping and leaping grab by Addie Green. Nice job flashing the leather out there in right. The defense for Virginia Tech, the outfield in particular, all season, maybe outside of this series, has done very, very well. The outfield does a great job of communicating. So you see both Peck and Green going back for this ball, but you see Peck kind of pull off at the last minute. So that means that Green's communicating that she's the one that's going for this ball. Fly ball hit back towards center. Peck goes back, reaches up, and makes the grab. The defensive sub ends the inning. Three up, three down go the Knolls. Bottom five, Florida State needs three outs when we come back on the ACC Network Extra. It's been all Seminoles today, leading by 10, entering the bottom of the fifth. Need three outs to secure a run rule victory. Shelby, you were mentioning runners in scoring position before the game. It's been the same story today. Yeah, continuing to tack on those runs. Nine for 17 with runners in scoring position. Really the Hokies right now as they come to the plate. This is their final chance to fend off the run rule here. They're coming into this inning and really need to, to discuss, just get on base, just move the runner. Don't try to do too much. Although our team is known for home run hitting, you think Coach DeMore is talking to his team about, we just need to get runners on base. That's how we're going to score. We only need two runs to be able to continue playing this game. So Florida State still electing which pitcher they're going to go with. It is still Sandercock in the circle. Seen a large number of pitchers take the circle for FSU this series. Well, they do have several options to go for, and several of them are already warmed up, but it seems like Sandercock is going to go ahead and take that final warm-up pitch. I guess one and good. <laughs> it just only has time for one, maybe with the... Yeah, probably only time. She did stay in the dugout for a little bit longer. Maybe she was running to the restroom or something. I'm not sure what the what the holdup there was, but one's going to have to be good enough for her. Well, it is the heart of the Hokies' batting order due up. It is a 10-run lead for FSU. Well, this is exactly the part of the lineup that you want up for the Hokies in this situation. Cam Fagan arguably performing the best for the coaches for the Hokies in this series. So this is exactly who you want to start. It's Fagan, Green, Bailey, do up. First pitch to Fagan from Sander, cock a ball upstairs. It's been really impressive watching the Florida State offense and defense today. For FSU, the 16 runs the most since March of 2020 when Florida State defeated Detroit Mercy 16 to zero. That is a lot of runs, especially against in a top 25 matchup. Usually games like this are being held to, you know, three to two or, you know, four to one that, you know, the other scores that we've actually even seen in the last two games of this series. This 16 to six score that we see is not a, a usual scoreboard. Been a high scoring game. The only zero showing on the line score for FSU is the previous frame. It was a one, two, three spot for the pitcher and grind. And Fagan fouls one off, out of play. That's really what you want from your offense is that they are putting up runs every single inning and not having any kind of major droughts on the scoreboard. That makes winning a little bit easier when every every inning you're tacking a few more on. That also speaks to up and down the lineup, the strength of Florida State hitters. Virginia Tech trying to to extend this game by a little bit to try to get themselves back in this game. Hokies would need three runs this inning to extend the game. 
Kim Fagan doing a great job fouling him off. A couple of back-to-back -back foul balls. She's seen four pitches this at-bat so far. We've seen this series multiple Virginia Tech hitters get into pitcher-hitter duels where there are more than 10 pitches in a single at-bat. Fagan takes a pitch downstairs. Well, Virginia Tech and Florida State doing battle on the softball field. Virginia Tech's baseball team passed Florida State on the way up. They're down in Tallahassee take, playing a baseball series right now. With Virginia Tech game, taking game one of the baseball series yesterday with a historic offense of their own. Sienna Clark bringing that one in a little high and tight. She understands she still needs to be careful around the Virginia Tech hitters, especially Cam Fagan. You talk to Pete DeMore and this Virginia Tech squad, and often hear him talk about how the dugout never feels out of the game. They always feel like they're in it, no matter the opponent, no matter the score. And I believe that has to be the story here of despite being three outs away from being run ruled by Florida State, these Hokie hitters are going to come out and keep trying to put the barrel on the softball. Is back up the middle over to Muffley on a weird hop. It's over to first, the rare 163 ground out as it just hit off the leg of Sandercock. See Fagan here just really kind of sticking her bat out to get that outside corner. Ball goes right past Sandercock, but Muffley just showing off that strength she has playing shortstop, a great leader for the Seminoles. It almost seemed like the ball glancing off of Sandercock's leg slowed it down enough for Muffley to be able to get there. Addie Green, the next batter with Virginia Tech, down to its final two outs. Green with a double back in the third inning. She's one of the five Hokie hits today. All five of the Hokies hits came in that big six-run third. Inside yet again, Green watches two pitches miss off the hand of Sandercock. And FSU heading into that midweek with Florida, the team that came here to Tech Softball Park and took down Virginia Tech in the Blacksburg Super Regional last year. Virginia Tech knows how dangerous of a team Florida is. And with Gainesville and Tallahassee being so close, I'm sure Florida State does as well. That's their next matchup in a midweek. Super Regional, the first time Virginia Tech had hosted a Super Regional with three appearances. So the Gators next on tap for Florida State. Like I said, that schedule doesn't get much easier. Florida State, despite the scoreboard right now, Virginia Tech, a really tough opponent, obviously in the top 25 for a reason that shows in their ACC record as well and their overall record. But the schedule does not get much easier for Florida State. On the Alameda staff. Back up the middle on a fly out to Muffley, making a nice play. Muffley's had a lot of good plays over at shortstop today. A lot of action on the left side of the field. The Hokies now down to their final out in this ball game. A run rule imminent 
at Tech Softball Park in the series finale. Bailey had that three-run home run back in the third inning that sparked a lot of life into this Hokies team. And she needs to continue bringing that confidence into this at bat, but realize that home run is not necessarily needed. Just find a way to get on base. Stay relaxed, don't try to do too much. Virginia Tech, we didn't see the home run appear in the first two games of this series. And we're talking about coming into this series, a Goliath versus Goliath matchup, the pitching staff of Florida State and the offense of Virginia Tech. And it took a while to get the bats going, but there's a grounder over to third, a base hit for Jamie Bailey. She gets aboard and it sends the game by at least one batter as Bree Peck, now the center fielder, comes to the plate. This is nice execution by Jamie Bailey. She's turning on this pitch, getting it right down that left field line. Again, Peck is just going to be looking to continue on that streak, following up Bailey. Stay relaxed, put a ball in play. The run needed to extend the game for the Hokies is in the on-deck circle, represented by Ritter. First pitch to Peck in there for a strike. I like to seeing the patience out of the Virginia Tech hitters in this inning here, not swinging at those first pitches. They don't seem to be overly anxious. I think that's a good adjustment from what we've seen in the previous two games. Coming down to the final inning, you, you can kind of feel that the Virginia Tech hitters are, are anxious and, and, and overly aggressive. And so far in this, we've seen patience, and it's paying off for them. Grounder gets through, back-to-back -back base hits. It goes all the way to the wall. Bailey gets the green light coming home. A run crosses the plate here in the bottom of the fifth. Hokies say we're not done quite yet. Great hitting followed up by great base running by Jamie Bailey a leader for the Hokies, both on and off the field. So we see this drop ball pitch low inside. Peck is able to turn on it, getting it through that 5-6 hole. And Jamie Bailey has that go sign from Coach Demore at third base. Standing up as she crosses home. It's been an impressive day for Bree Peck. Started as the designated player, became the center fielder, a double and a triple on her line today as it brings up Ritter, who hit the two-run home run back in the third. Check swing, but it's in fair territory. A race to first base. It's an out. What a play from Harding on to Keene as Florida State gets the run rule victory, 16-7. to Shelby, your thoughts from this dominant game from the Florida State Seminoles? Yeah, that's exactly what it is, a dominant performance. 12 hits from Florida State, capitalizing on two Virginia Tech errors. And really what that's showing is the runners in scoring position, the extra base hits, the doubles, the home run from Leonard, just able to rack up those 16 runs. And the inside the circle for Virginia Tech, seeing some struggle against a great hitting team. So they're going to need to learn from this as they go into the postseason. The Seminoles break out the brooms. So for Shelby Gwynn, I'm Tyler Katz saying so long from Tech Softball Park in Blacksburg where the final scores Florida State 16, Virginia Tech 7 in five innings.